in a future video, I might get into antitrust laws. But I can tell you, I'm already antitrusting these two guys. And there it is. Yesterday, I'm bringing up the antitrust issues. Today, the antitrust issues with the PGA Tour is dominating all the headlines. But let's not stop there. Let's use this little thing called Google or El Google in Spanish to really get to the bottom of what's going on with this whole anti-live tour situation. And maybe, I'm not gonna promise it, but just maybe we're gonna uncover a global conspiracy just in real time together. I'm gonna walk you through my Google searches and we're gonna come out on the other side of this smarter, wiser, and maybe a little bit paranoid. To really soften the blow today, because it really is like a Black Mirror episode, I wore this Happy Dolphins t-shirt. So anytime it gets too real for you, just focus right here. My journey down into the Google rabbit hole started off innocently enough last night. I saw something pop up on the Golf Channel about Afonso Ribera doing the Carlton at that celebrity golf tournament. And then I investigated a little bit and he actually said on Jimmy Kimmel show that when people ask him, he's like, nope, not going to do it. Sure fooled all of us, Alfonso. Then I started getting into some meaty stuff about the Live Tour demanding world ranking recognition at St. Andrews. Last episode focused on the official world golf ranking points. A person who's not a fan of Greg Norman or the Live Golf Tour, if you read through as many tweets and articles, is Eamon Lynch, the golf writer slash announcer for Golf Week, which is also related to USA Today. Here's a brief sample of his writing. Live golf is a tumor that grows by diminishing everything around it. Eamon Lynch's articles and his points of view were so over the top, I decided to follow the money trail and see who was behind Golf Week and USA Today. A quick Google search shows that Golf Week was purchased by Gannett Company in 2016 and that Mike Reed is the CEO. According to the Boston Business Journal, Reed earned $7.74 million in 2021 a figure that's 160 times more than the median employee. Here you can see that Gannett doesn't just own Golf Week, its flagship is USA Today. At this point, you're probably wondering, where am I going with this? And that's a fair question. But if you watch this one episode, which is critical to understanding the big boy pants golf metasphere, then you'd realize that the UAE is potentially involved as anyone who badmouths the Live Tour often has ties to the UAE who's in direct competition with Saudi Arabia as they're the two major players in their region. And sure enough, once I Google USA Today and UAE, the first two articles that pop up seem to be very pro UAE. One is about the UAE intercepting two missiles over the capital and the other one is about paying respects to Sheikh Mohammed. Here's just a little background info about Gatehouse Media and Gannett agreeing to do a merger, just centralizing news source power. You know when big media corporations merge together, more smaller voices are drowned out, which makes it easier for them to pitch a singular narrative and that's exactly what's going on also in terms of their whole virtue signaling they actually pay women a lot less than men there's the info but back on the topic of how USA Today badmouths the live golf tournament you think USA Today isn't trying to push some weird narrative on June 14th, 2022, the title is President Biden 
to meet with Crown Prince during Saudi Arabia trip. And there's a photo of MBS looking very warm and inviting. Just the next day, USA Today's title is Live, Saudi Arabia's Golf League Surfaces Kingdom's Poor Rights Record. You didn't bring that up the day before? And now you're going to use a photo of MBS looking super shady off to the side? The reason USA Today badmouthed the Live Golf Tour is because it's in direct competition with the UAE and their owning of the European Tour, now known as the Dubai Ports World Tour. And the fact that President Biden is going to Saudi Arabia to buy oil really doesn't affect them. That's why they don't really betray the President Biden visit to Saudi Arabia in a negative light. On June 13th, Vincent Cyril joins Gannett as the Chief Technology Officer. The key point here is that he is the founder and managing director of Pivotal Technologies that focused on, among other things, artificial intelligence. Also notice how he is involved in the gaming industry. It's a little bit of foreshadowing. Would you look at this? Pivot Technologies has an office in Dubai, the UAE. Pivot Technologies is headquartered in Dubai. It focuses on artificial intelligence and chatbots. Just a quick recap, because I don't want you to fall too far behind. Gannett has brought in a guy from Pivot Technologies to be their chief technology officer. And the company that he's from, he originally founded, was based in Dubai and works in artificial intelligence and chatbots. Did you just say Skynet in the Terminator movies? That's Pivot Technologies' Instagram page. Then you have chatbots, myth versus reality. They can chat in a way that's surprisingly authentic nowadays. And just in case you don't know what a chatbot is, it's a computer program designed to simulate conversation with human users, especially over the internet. That should work out well. The list of companies that use chatbots include MasterCard. And if you recall recently, MasterCard suspended two golfers that went to the Live Golf League. This is coincidentally, or maybe not, reported by Golf Week USA Today. I then came across Game On Technology that is also involved in chatbots and that it's collaborating with the PGA Tour. Game On Technology, chatbots, and AI platforms. Kind of sounds a little familiar back to going back to the chief technology officer of Gannett. Alan Stanojev of Game On Technology states, I am very curious to see how the legalization of sports betting is going to affect the game and how it is presented to the average fan. This got me off into the legalization of sports betting, which occurred fairly recently, and also times up with the end of the opioid crisis, at least the more intense part of the opioid crisis and you could view it potentially that this gambling substitute is replacing the opioid crisis as they do have commonalities in terms of addiction. Kalin Stanojev also brings up Black Mirror and says I think we are a ways away from having a compelling Black Mirror episode on our hands. But that said, I think it is going to become increasingly difficult to tell whether you are conversing with a person or a machine. Everyone should be cringing right now. Once it got on the topic of gambling, I looked into Saudi Arabia's gambling laws and under Islamic law, it's forbidden. Likewise, under UAE law, gambling is also forbidden. But then, I saw this. 
and then I realized I had put on my big boy pants and done some amazing investigative journalism, which I'm sharing with you right now. UAE in early January takes over the European tour, renaming it the DP World Tour. And then on January 25th of 2022, the UAE announces legalized gambling. The UAE is truly putting forth some great effort to emerge from the shadows of Saudi Arabia and establish itself in pole position. If this was a magic show, you'd know that the UAE was using misdirection. It's controlling the media, it's got chatbots and AI, and it's encouraging everyone to start gambling. So don't be surprised in the future when your phone keeps telling you to double down. Please subscribe, share, and like. And if you play the Strixon 765 irons, let me know in the comment sections if you like them. I'm thinking about getting them next.